Let's explore volume shading in Arnold for a special effect, such as this smoke trail, and you can think of other uses for it. Here's a jetpack, and that's a smoke trail, and let's look at how to create this. In the viewport, here's a piece of geometry, and actually there's several different overlapping pieces of geometry. And the type of shader that's applied is an AI volume shader, and we'll look at how to set that up. And in the background is just your sky dome light with a HDRI image. Go start a whole new scene. First, you need an object, and let's pretend this will be whatever device will that will emit the smoke. I need something to act as a smoke trail, and you can box model a box into it or a cylinder, distort a sphere, whatever you like. I'm going to go with the helix under Create Polygon Primitives. Here's the helix. I'm just picking the helix because it has some type of cool curly cue. It would be a good shape to work with. You could adjust the height to spread it out. And you can see now why I picked that as a smoke trail. Not much of a smoke trail now. You could just start editing the points, making it thicker or thinner whatever you need. Let's go ahead and select the vertices here, B key. Alternative would be to loft out everything, scale. I'll do the same thing on the other end, selecting a bunch of vertices. If I have soft selection enabled, just want to thin that out. This has nothing to do with the volume part except we need a shape to hold that volume. And this is the shape I'll be using. It's a fun looking piece of geometry. A lot of the magic happens with Arnold by adding a sky dome light. And then adding an HDRI image. I added the sky HDR image. This is a preview of it. Now it's time to add a volume shader to this. I'm going to right click, assign new material, and the material will be a Lambert because I'm going to use this Lambert to apply an Arnold AI volume to it. After assigning the material, click on this first tab, which deals with how Lambert is applied to the surface. I'm going to remove the surface material. I know this won't look good to begin with because it ends up green. And when it renders, it's going to render. It renders as pink, which is a sign something went wrong with the surface, but that's OK because we're looking to put a volume within here. We don't care about the surface. Right below the surface material, click on volume material, connect it to a node, and that node will be, and that will be an Arnold node. And I'm going to type in volume. I'm looking to connect the AI standard volume. We're almost there. I click render, got this squiggly line, doesn't look like what we need. Selecting the object, going to the shape of this object, opening up the Arnold settings. If we want something transparent, we would click that. So this object won't render opaque. Scrolling down to the volume attributes and changing the step size and volume padding. Step size to 0.1 and the volume padding to 1. Well, that looks a lot cooler than before. Let me zoom in to this thin area right here. And you can see right through it, there's a volume growing on the inside of the shape. And that's what, what the AI standard volume does. Shader describes the volume within a piece of geometry. But let's go to the actual input of the shader right here. Volume material, follow back upstream and adjust the density. Right now it's at one, at 0.1. The volume is just a wisp in the sky. 
Right now it's very smooth and that's great for some effects. I want this to be a little bit more distorted. I'm going to the displacement property and clicking on this node and I'm going to click on Arnold and I'm looking for noise, the AI noise. I'm going to increase the octaves to five or six and then render this. And just like that, we have this trailing stream of smoke coming out. You can take five. You can play with this number at two. You'll get this pattern. You increase the amplitude. And now we have this broken trail of smoke.